and shocking account of Michael Jackson's death that just don't stop. Now, details of his autopsy have been leaked and published by UK-based The Sun. This report says that the pop star was virtually bald and wearing a wig when he died. His face was a mass of plastic surgery scars and the bridge to his nose had vanished, with the right side caving in. Several ribs had broken when the rescuers tried reviving him while administering the CPR. There were four injection sites due to the adrenal jabs uh, which were aimed at his heart. The star's stomach had partially dissolved pills and he was severely emancipated as he ate just one meagre meal every day. The pop star weighed a mere 50 kgs which is massively below the ideal body weight for a man of 5 feet 10 inches. His skin was heavily scarred due to the 13 cosmetic surgeries. The surprising revelation is that Jackson's skin cancer surgery had worked and was free of infection. But he had bruises on his knees, on his shin. He had bruises and mild cuts on his back. Injection marks were found in most parts of his body. And shocking twist where uh, MJ's doctor has now clearly denied he injected the star with any powerful painkiller leading to his death. Speaking to the LA Times, Dr. Conrad Murray's lawyer has said that reports uh, suggested that the physician had injected the star with a powerful painkiller before his death was absolutely false. His lawyer has told the LA Times that uh, Murray had discovered Jackson unconscious in the bedroom of his home and the star was not breathing. He checked his pulse rate and found that it was weak. He then started started administering the CPR. The doctor apparently had clarified that he had not furnished or even prescribed Jackson with Demerol, that it was Murray who recommended, in fact, that an autopsy be conducted uh, uh, on his body. And relatives of Michael Jackson have said that it took 50 minutes for MJ's aides to call for an ambulance. At 11.30 in the morning, Jackson was given a shot of Demerol, a painkiller. He then collapsed on the living room floor. Present at the time were four people, MJ's doctor, bodyguard, one-time manager and the star's 12-year-old son. The pop star was taken to the bedroom and CPR given to him by the doctor who lived at Jackson's mansion. At 11.50 in the morning, a call was made to MJ's dad. A huge commotion then ensued about why 911 hadn't been called. It was at 12.21 p.m., 50 minutes after Jackson collapsed, that any attempt was really made to call an ambulance to revive the singer.